Sound design. Yeah. So how to use FIR filters without incurring a bunch of delay. So FIR filters are another one of those things that I just thought um, is too scary, it's too complicated, and you have to incur a bunch of delay and latency, so we can't really use them. Turns out, just another tool in the toolbox, uh, and I'm gonna show you right now how you can do that. So I just measured uh, the speaker that I have here in my living room, so imagine that um, you might be measuring something in the shop and you look at this, and this is actually fine, but you might say, you know what? I wanna make some changes here. Uh, I would like this response to be uh, just a little flatter and I don't like the, the way it rises up here in the low end, fine. So I measure this and I open this up in FIR Creator. Um, by the way, there are free FIR filter creator tools out there. I've played with a couple of them that look pretty cool. Um, if you guys would like me to make more videos about those in the future, let me know, but I happen to have FIR Creator, so I'm gonna use that now. So here's the thing I measured. Um, the first thing I might do is, so I'm gonna make sure I have a flat target here. The first thing I might do is just put in a low shelf since I saw here that starting at about uh, 400 hertz, you know, I wanted to, it, it starts to rise up and I don't want that. So um, I'll start this at about 400 at a bandwidth of say four and that just starts to correct uh, this problem that I was seeing here before. It doesn't take it all the way, but does t uh, bring these peaks down a little bit. So let's just start with that. Then I'll head over to auto mag and I'll say, let me go back over here. Let's say that between 62 Hertz all the way up to, I don't know, 12,000, <laughs> 62, 12,000. Let's flatten all of that out, okay? And not at something like uh, 48 points per octave, but at something like one third or one sixth. Here is the important setting to make this so that you don't have a bunch of added latency. Linear, so right now we're looking at um, phase before and phase after, and there's no change. But if I set this to phase minimum, there will be a corresponding change in the phase um, based on the changes that we are making to the magnitude. Now I'll head over to export, um, and I'll point out here that this started somewhere here, and this isn't enough resolution, so you need enough samples or taps uh, in your filter length to get you resolution all the way to the lowest frequency that you need. I'm not gonna talk about how you calculate that because it's pretty easy here to basically just raise this number up until I see less errors down here and I get the resolution in the low end that I want. So I could keep playing with this number, but I'm just gonna put in a really big number and see what happens. Okay, so now I've got a lot of resolution, uh, very few errors, and <clears throat> this is the scary thing. It says 166 milliseconds. Okay, and I don't know what this warning is, sample beyond plus minus one, not sure what that is. But if I go ahead and save this and export it, and then over here in my, where is it? Over here in my BSS Blue 160, I'm, I already loaded this filter earlier, so I wouldn't have to waste your time. So I'll just switch to that filter. And over here in Smart, we'll measure it. And there we go. So here are the changes that I put in. You can see that it's slightly flatter, right? Um, and it definitely sounded different. Um, not so many of these dips, not so many of these peaks, but no added delay. Same delay as before. So if I were to save this, I already have it saved before, so let me just hide this. And if I switch back and forth between these, no added delay. Okay, so even though it said over here, hey, 166 milliseconds of delay, because it's minimum phase, everything that I put in there is minimum, are, were minimum phase filters, you can see the change in the phase here. I can make these changes to the magnitude without worry about, worrying about incurring latency. Okay, 
Let's do one more. Let's take a look at the sub. So I'll hide all of these. I measured my sub earlier. It looked like this and we're going to do the same thing in FIR Creator. So import load my sub. I think this is it. And I might start with a bandpass filter at, what is this, 70 hertz. Um, just to take a little bit of the edge off there so this isn't just a one note wonder. Um, again, I'm kind of just playing around here. This isn't, the sub doesn't really need anything. It's kind of how it sounds normally and it's, it's pretty much fine. Um, and then I might want to go from 56 to 85, 83, 56, 83. There we go. And then it'll just flatten it out a little bit more. So I'll go ahead and export that. Again, I've done this before, so I can just go to my second output and I'll select that filter. There it is. And back over here in Smart, I can measure that. Oh. There we go. Super flat sub now. So let's see, did I save this before? Let's save it again. So there's my sub before and after, and there's my main. Let's get rid of my sub before. So here are my two new measurements. Let's hide this. Here's my main speaker, here's my sub, and I can look at them together. Main plus sub with all pass filters. Great. And so this is the new shape that I have. So I went through this pretty quickly and I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to, you know, the results that I was getting. But my whole goal here was just to show you that all pass, um, sorry, I keep, if I'm saying all pass filters, I mean FIR filters. FIR filters, oh, and I even called that one all pass filter. Let's rename that. Main plus sub with FIR filter. Okay, and it doesn't need to be in that folder. I did that on accident. The point here was just to show that you can use FIR filters to make adjustments like this. Um, and while I almost never use them in the field, and I think it's controversial, and a lot of people think that only manufacturers should be using FIR filters, I do think it's something that you could use in the shop ahead of time, um, or just have it as a quick EQ tool. Uh, imagine if I really did want to put in a bunch of EQ filters uh, on the response of the speaker, and I didn't want to go in and do them one at a time until I had 20 of them. I could just do the auto magnitude setting in my FIR creator and get a result like this. And then I would obviously want to listen to the results and see that it actually sounded better um, before I moved forward. So let me know how you guys are using FIR filters. Are you using these kind of minimum phase filters? Are you using them in the field? I'd be curious about that. Um, it's not something that I've worked into my workflow yet, but I am getting some more tools to use them, so I might in the future. So let me know. Thanks. Sound design. Yeah.